Now we may also want to have a counter that tells us how many bricks we have, or the sort of inverse is how many points we have, uh, which basically you get a point for every brick that you smash, right? Now as discussed, this is one of the ways of doing a GUI text, which is to have it an actual object, a, a GUI text object in our hierarchy. Another way of doing it is to take advantage of the on GUI code of any object whatsoever. Um, and I'm going to use that as a next example. <clears throat> and I'm going to, I don't know, I guess I'll attach it to a paddle, right? So our paddle, this is our player, also has a score. So rather than, um, so here's our live score, let's move it here. Rather than having an existing GUI text object and, and just changing it, we're going to do it where we have a score, which starts at zero, and we're going to have an on GUI function. And our on GUI function is going to be responsible for putting the text on the screen. And it's, it's kind of a weird kind of function because it runs every frame. It actually runs every frame twice, but at the same time, it's responsible for displaying things that you would think sometimes you just want to put up once and then leave. And I, I have a little bit of a hard time kind of really groking how it works, truly understanding how it works. Um, but it does work, and it works fine. So in this on GUI function, we simply call functions that we want to draw the right GUI elements on the screen. And for a simple piece of text, the best thing to do is go, oops, spell it correctly, GUI.label. And it needs a rectangle object that defines the sort of space that can be occupied by the label. Uh, so we're going to go and create a new rectangle, and we're going to set it in the top left corner. Now, one thing that's worth noting, when we are doing the GUI text game object, the coordinates range from 0 to 1. From the left side was 0, the right side was 1, the bottom was 0, the top was 1. Well, here, the coordinate system is entirely different. The top left corner is 0, 0, as opposed to the bottom left corner. And also, these numbers represent pixels. So if we were going, so 0 would be the far left. And let's say we sit, set this to 10. This is going to be, it's actually not a float. It's going to be 10 pixels off of the top. And we're going to say that the width and height is going to be 100 by 100. And then we're going to pass it some text. I'm actually going to pass it just some garbage long text so we can see what happens here. And if I save and then tab back over and run this, we should get some text in the top left corner of the screen. You can see it automatically does word wrap based on the width of the rectangle. If I change this width to 300, <clears throat> then it should be enough to all fit on one line. There we go. Now, of course, we don't want this sort of garbage text in here. What we really want is to say something like score plus our actual score, which should start at 0. And if we double check this, we've got that. Now, we would obviously like to add a style to this text, make it look a little bit different. The lives look so very good being bigger and bolder. And so again, as always, there's a few different ways of doing it, but we're going to try to apply a GUI skin to our to our text here and change the way that it looks. So what we're going to do in our project, we're going to create a new asset called GUI skin, and we're going to call it our scoreboard skin. And this controls every GUI element that we could use. Uh, we could change the font. What we're mostly interested in is going into the label and changing the font size to 20 and making it bold. Now by itself, this won't do anything. We have to apply the skin to our GUI elements. And the best way to apply this is to go back into our paddle script. And it's still responsible for creating our scoreboard. Maybe this doesn't belong here. Maybe this belongs somewhere else. But we're going to keep going with it for now. And we're going to create um, GUI skin um, scoreboard skin. And actually, this needs to be public. So now our paddle, if we find it in our listing, here it is, is going to have, there it is, scoreboard skin. And we're just going to drag that over to that. Okay, we've assigned that. And then in our on GUI, we're going to make sure to set uh, our GUI.skin is equal to our scoreboard skin. And if we run this, our text should be... It's not. What have I done wrong? Ah, all right, now I see what happened here. Because there is a sort of a default font applied to everything. In our label, if we don't assign a specific font, it just uses the default, even if we tweak some of these numbers down here. So all I have to do is, for the font for my label, is explicitly set it to Arial. And of course, I can import additional fonts. And now, if I play this, it will take my changes into account. So we've got a scoreboard over here. Of course, it doesn't do anything. And in normal program, you probably don't want to use both styles of GUI. I just want to present both particular options here, um, just to give you the option to understand them. You can also create, uh, through the on GUI, you can create a huge variety of buttons and images and all kinds of things. I mean, you can create a, um, a game or a GUI texture object in here to 
to include just an image, a flat image. Uh, but there's just so many more options by going through on GUI, and of course it's easier to make certain programming changes. I just realized we're still going off the edge of the screen here, but that wouldn't be very hard to fix. Um, so there we go for stylings. We've got our score. Now we would like to have the score increase whenever we kill a box, or a brick rather. So how are we going to do that? Well, really this is something that's going to be taken care of in the brick script. When we destroy ourselves, we also need to tell the paddle, hey, improve your score by one. And that's exactly how we're going to do it. We're going to do something like game object dot find. And of course, we know the name of this object, which is paddle dot get component component. It's going to be a paddle script. And actually, we could all keep stringing it together. And we're going to say something like um, add point. And this box is just worth one point. And of course, we could stick this as a sort of a public uh, point value. Oh, public int point value equals one. That way we can customize it based on what kind of brick it is. And there we have it. And of course, this function doesn't exist in our paddle script. It does need to be public, so let's go and do that. Public void uh, int v for value. And our score is going to be incremented by our value. Now, if we hit play once more, score is at zero. Bam. There we go. Easy peasy. And now we have an actual game. Of course, our level is not particularly interesting. And really, we would want more than one level. Actually, that seems like the, the, the next reasonable thing to do, um, as well as kind of locking the paddle in place. It's a kind of a trivial programming thing, but what the heck, let's go ahead and do that. Again, there's a few different ways we'd want to do this, but I think I'm just going to hard code in a limit, something like uh, if uh, transform dot position dot x is greater than um, well let's see this is goes 20 what is our limit yeah, hard coding is not the best way of doing things but you can see so I've got my paddle selected and I can see it live here I'm gonna say that my limit should be hmm maybe around 7.5 actually is going to be the perfect spot for it Maybe 7.4, just to give it a gap. So if it's greater than 7.4, then I'm actually going to want to do... Uh, now, this is a translate, actually. I don't want to translate, because that's move by something or other. We actually just want to set the position. Set the position to be equal to um, a new vector, where the x is equal to 7.4f. Actually, I should put an f in here, keep everything floats. The y is equal to whatever we currently have. And the z is also equal to whatever we already have, like so. And that should work to clamp us on the right-hand side, or not. Oh, we need a new. New vector 3 is what we want. There we are. Thump! That's good. And then on the other side, we want to clamp it, well, I guess at negative 7.4. And I'm sure there's a smarter way of just doing this, but I'm kind of trying to go fast. Because this is not a particularly important part piece of code to implement. There we are. And there we are. I can still send it off to the side, even if I'm clamped to one side. So that's good. Excellent. So, um, right, the next thing to do would maybe be to load a new level when we have no more bricks left. And that's not the simplest solution to, to decide. How do you determine when the last brick is dead? Well, one thing you could do is every time a brick died, here we are, every time a brick died, you could find out, well, how many bricks do I have left? And this would be a good place to introduce the tagging system. 